Good morning. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. I'd like to welcome all of you worshiping here this morning. And once to all of you, happy Mother's Day. Uh, God's blessings to you on this special day for you as you have served your family well. And may the Lord bless and keep you this day, especially in his care. Lord's blessings to you as we begin our worship this morning with the words in which we were baptized into. Baptized into Christ's death and into his resurrection is how we begin our worship this morning. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hallelujah! Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Let us now confess our sins to God, our merciful Father. Gracious God, in heartfelt repentance, we admit and confess our sinfulness. We are sin-stained people by nature. Each day we have sinned and done things we ought not to have done, and have not done that which we are to have been doing as your servants. We have not seen people in the loving way that you see them. We have not always been ready to care and quick to help. We do indeed deserve your punishment in this life and for eternity. Trusting in your mercy, we come to you for forgiveness. Our trust is in the merits of your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ. Have mercy on us, O God. Grant us forgiveness of all our sins, and by the power of the Holy Spirit at work within our hearts and lives, Lead us into ways that reflect your goodness and love. God is loving and merciful. He sees us with loving eyes and graciously hears our supplications. By the command of our Lord, and as his called and ordained servant, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please rise. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Risen and ascended Lord, while we were still in our sins, you chose us, laid down your life for us, and called us friends. By your great love for us, inspire us to love one another and to go out into the world to bear fruit according to your promise. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. 
You may be seated. The first reading today is from the book of Acts, chapter 10, verses 34 to 48. So Peter opened his mouth and said, Truly, I understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation, everyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. As for the word that he sent to Israel, preaching good news and peace through Jesus Christ, he is Lord of all. You yourselves know what happened throughout all Judea, beginning from Galilee, after the baptism that John proclaimed, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. He went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. And we are witnesses of all that he did both in the country of the Jews and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree, but God raised him on the third day and made him to appear, not to all the people, but to us who had been chosen by God as witnesses, who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. And he commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one appointed by God to be judge of the living and the dead. To him all the prophets bear witness that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. While Peter was still saying these things, the Holy Spirit fell on all who heard the word. And the believers from among the circumcised who had come with Peter were amazed because the gift of the Holy Spirit was poured out even on the Gentiles. For they were hearing them speaking in tongues and extolling God. Then Peter declared, can anyone withhold water for baptizing these people who have received the Holy Spirit just as we have? And he commanded them to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Then they asked him to remain for some days. This is the word of the Lord. The epistle lesson for today is in 1 John chapter 5, verses 1 to 8. Everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ has been born of God, and everyone who loves the Father loves whoever has been born of him. By this we know that we love the children of God when we love God and obey his commandments. For this is the love of God, that we keep his commandments. And his commandments are not burdensome, for everyone who has been born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that has overcome the world, our faith. Who is it that overcomes the world except the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God? This is he who came by water and blood, Jesus Christ, not by the water only, but by the water and the blood. And the Spirit is the one who testifies because the Spirit is the truth. For there are three that testify, the Spirit, the water, and the blood. These three agree. This is the word of the Lord.
please rise for the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 15th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. These things I have spoken to you, that my joy may be in you, and that your joy may be full. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, that someone lay down his life for his friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. No longer do I call you servants, for the servant does not know what his master is doing. But I have called you friends, for all that I have heard from my Father I have made known to you. You did not choose me, but I chose you, and appointed you that you should go and bear fruit, and that your fruit should remain, so that whatever you ask the Father in my name, he may give it to you. These things I command you, so that you will love one another. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. God has made us his people through our baptism into Christ Jesus, living together in trust and hope. We confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He ascended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. It is time for children's message, so even adults, I hope you get something out of this. Um, I have a table, and on this table there are real glasses. There are four glasses, and they will break, right? They're, 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 they're normal size glasses. And then I also have three knives. If you notice, the knives are taller than the glasses. They're different colors in the glasses. They're different shape, of course, obviously, because they're knives, right? They're not sharp knives. They're just butter knives. But my question to you this morning is, is it possible for me to take these knives and balance one glass on top of them? Build a tripod? Are you sure you're me doing this? The glass will break, OK? It is possible. Any, anybody have any ideas? For this to work, the knives must lie down. So the, the knives must lie down. like that. It's possible. But the knives have to lie down. Now think about this. People are different. Some people have different shapes than others. Some people are skinny. Some people are bigger. Some people are tall. Some people are short. Some people are dark. Some people are light. Some people have hair. Other people do not. We're all different. But how do you consider somebody really a good friend? How do you support them? Well, that's the ultimate friendship that we see in our, in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. He is the one who lays his life down to support us. He gave the ultimate sacrifice for us. He didn't just sacrifice something. He sacrificed himself. 
going to the cross, nailed upon the cross, died upon the cross to take away your sins and my sins, and that through his death, God grants us forgiveness, and we know that positively, absolutely, 100%, because Jesus rose from the dead, which we still celebrate today. And Jesus is our friend, the greatest friend we have, and the greatest friend we ever will have, because he is the one who supports us. He lays in his life to give us everlasting life. Let's all join together in a word of prayer. Please, please, uh, re- please uh, re- repeat after me. Dear Lord, support us and comfort us when we fall. Forgive us our sins and grant us your eternal life. In your name, O oh Lord, we pray. Amen. And we continue with the hymn. Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. The basis of our meditation this morning is from the Gospel. Jesus' words that he speaks to us, especially in verse 16. Jesus says, You did not choose me, but I chose you, and I appointed you that you may go and bear fruit, and your fruit will remain in order that whatever you ask the Father in my name, he will give to you. Dear brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, these words of Jesus are great comfort to us. 
knowing that Jesus has chosen us, has granted us his spirit. So why is it that we many times live our lives the other way around? Jesus says, you do not choose me, but I chose you. So oftentimes we think that it's the other way around, that we have chosen God, and whatever we want God to do, he will do for us as if we are manipulating him one way or another. And yes, even sometimes, it may sound absurd, but yes, sometimes we make our God into a luck charm. Jeremy was a young man, an older teenager, who had just bought his first car. It was a used car, but it was his first car, and it was new to him. And so it was time to give what he was driving back to his dad, to his father, John. Now, Jeremy was a typical teenage boy. Messy. If you had opened his car, you could see any and everything on the floorboards, in the front seat and in the back seat, paper strung everywhere. It was a mess. Whenever Jeremy bought his new car, he was infatuated with it so much that his dad, John, kept telling him, please clean out my car so I can get it back. Finally, after a month of doing this, John had had enough. Went out with a trash bag and started throwing things away out of his own car that Jeremy was driving. It came time for him to claim back his property. And he was walking through the living room with a bag of trash in his hand from his car that Jeremy was driving when Jeremy was sitting in the living room watching TV. And he had the nerve and the audacity to ask the question, Dad, you didn't happen to throw away that cross that was in the console of that car, did you? I need that. That's Jesus, my good luck charm. He keeps me safe wherever I go. John looked at his son and said, no, Jeremy, that was a deteriorating palm tree branch cross that was given to you years ago, and it did no good for you. Yes, I threw it away. It is many times, this story oftentimes is with us as well. We may not be in such an idolatry way that Jeremy was, but we do many times treat Jesus as if we have chosen him to be our good luck charm, to keep us safe, to keep us secure, to keep us stable. Jesus reminds us, you did not choose me, but I chose you. We're reminded that still today and every Sunday as we continue to celebrate our Lord's resurrection. He has been raised from the dead and he lives and reigns to all eternity and he lives in us and around us and he lives to guide and direct our lives as well. And so often, many times in our lives, we forget this. We forget that God in his son, Jesus, has chosen us to be his own people. So it is Peter who reminds us in the first reading that Jesus was crucified. He died for our sins, and he rose again to give us everlasting life. And in the epistle this morning also, that reminds us to keep his commandments that are not burdensome, burdensome to us, but we are to keep his commandments because we still live in the risen, living life that God gives us in his son, Jesus. Jesus reminds us again in those comforting words, you did not choose me, but I chose you. That you may be appointed, that I appointed you, that you may go and bear fruit. That is the fruit that we bear to each other that we bear to one another, that we love one another as God has loved us in his son, Jesus Christ. Earlier in this chapter, in John chapter 15, Jesus reminds us exactly what he's talking about when he talks about choosing, when he talks about bearing fruit, when he talks about abiding in him. Jesus tells us that the Father is the vine dresser and that he is the vine and we are the branches. 
If we are connected to him, we bear much fruit. In other words, we do the same thing that the vine does. And what did the vine do? But he gave up his life for us, whom he calls friends. So also we are to give up ourselves to others. As he has loved us, so we are also to love each other. And those who do not know anything about the vine or about the vine dresser, we are to bear fruit. And our fruit remains. Because the Spirit is with us. The Spirit dwells within our hearts. For he has chosen us and has given us the appointment to bear fruit that truly does remain. We are secure. We are safe in the arms of our friend of our Savior, Jesus Christ. That is stability. The manager of a corporation called a sales representative into his office. He had the sales representative sit down and the manager looked him in the eye and said, you know, your sales have been dropping off in the last three months. Then he pointed to the wall behind him. He said, you see this wall? And the sales representative looked at the wall. It was a wall with a map on it. And on that map were pins with colored heads on them. And the manager looked at the representative and said, all those pins represent you as representatives, sales representatives of this company in their each location and region. I'm not going to fire you because of your sales, but I'm going to loosen your pin off the wall just to show you how limited your stability here is with our company. That's the exact opposite that it is with us in God. Our pin is in the wall on the map. It is stable and it is firm because we have a friend, Jesus, us, and cares for us, who gives up his life for us, who has chosen us to bear fruit. And then it is that Jesus tells us these reassuring words as we who live in this sin-filled world, biding in his love as we bear fruit. He tells us, whatever you ask the Father in my name, he will give to you. What assurance that we have that stability with our God, that he grants us the love that he shares with us that we should share with others around us as well. On September the 10th, 1819, a man by the name of Joseph Scriven was born in Ireland. He grew up in Ireland as an Irishman, and he went to college at Trinity College in Dublin, where he received a degree. He later then fell in love with a young maiden. Sad to say, though, on the day before they were to get married, he was on one side of a bridge of a river, and she was on the other, on horseback. And as she was crossing the bridge, the horse threw her into the river, into the raging waters below, where she drowned. Joseph actually watched his fiance die in front of his eyes, and he had no way to help her whatsoever. Being heartbroken, Joseph moved from Ireland to Canada. Later on, as he lived in Canada, he would meet a young lady by the name of Elisa Roach. They fell in love and were engaged to be married. And as tragedy has it, she fell down with pneumonia and died before they were married. Later on in Joseph's life, he also became ill. And on his bed, on his sick bed, a neighbor or friend came to visit him. And as the neighbor or friend was visiting him, he noticed a piece of paper with a poem written on it. So he asked Joseph, Joseph, what is this? Who wrote this? And Joseph said, the Lord and I wrote this between the two of us. It was a poem that Joseph wrote for his mother. For his mother back in Ireland was going through a difficult time in her life. And he thought he would write a poem to give her some comfort. The words of that poem 
or the last hymn which we will sing this, this morning. He wrote, what a friend we have in Jesus. How true it is that we can ask the Father in Jesus' name because he has chosen us, we have not chosen him, and he has appointed us to go and bear fruit, and our fruit remains, and whatever we ask the Father in his name, he will give to us. Our Father grants to us eternal life in the name of Jesus Christ, who has risen from the dead and continues to guide us and direct us as our friend, our Savior, our Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. Since 1870, the second Sunday in May has been designated as a time to honor mothers in the United States. In more recent times, expressions of appreciation and honor have been extended to grandmothers and great-grandmothers and all women whose contributions to the well-being of children have enriched society. Through the ages, many women have been remembered and honored by the church. The hymn for all the faithful women celebrates Christian women throughout the centuries, thanking God for them. Several women commemorated in individual stanzas of this hymn are honored for their examples of blessed motherhood. Although we will not sing these stanzas, among those mentioned are Hannah from the Old Testament, and Eunice and Lois, mentioned in the New Testament, writings of Paul. There is also a stanza for Mary, the mother of our Lord. Bringing the remembrance to present times, a new stanza honors mothers from all times and places as gifts among us. This stanza is written by Gregory J. Wismer. The final stanza which we will sing is a doxology, most appropriate this day to glorify God as we express our thanks for the faithful women in our lives and in the ongoing life of the church. Together now we sing the hymn for all the faithful women. us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. We thank you, gracious God, for your church and pray that your people would live confidently and in their confidence joyfully share the message of your salvation in word and in deed. Gathered by the Holy Spirit, we pray for your blessing with all grace that we may evidence the fruit of the Spirit in our lives. O risen Lord, Live in us that we may live in you. We pray for our families, especially for mothers, grandmothers, and great-grandmothers on this special day. We ask for your blessing 
your bounteous blessing to be on all those who share in our Christian fellowship and join with us in the worship and for all who are part of the household of faith. O risen Lord, live in us that we may live in you. Heavenly Father, we pray for all those who are going through any and all forms of tragedy, especially those suffering from the death of loved ones and injury in Israel and Mexico City and all places of the world that have tragedy happening. Grant them your comfort and your peace. O risen Lord, live in us that we may live in you. We pray for those with special concerns and needs this day. We ask your healing presence to be upon those who are suffering from cancer. O risen Lord, live in us that we may live in you. We pray for our shut-ins. We pray for those who continue to have special concerns. Gracious Father, we ask you to give healing in the name of your Son, Jesus, to those who are recovering from surgery. Give comfort and peace to those recovering from strokes. Give your help to those struggling with immunity problems. Grant comfort and care also to those suffering from the coronavirus. O risen Lord, live in us that we may live in you. Most merciful God, we thank you for all those faithful people whose words and actions have guided us in the past, especially remembering those no longer with us on earth who now share in your eternal presence. By the working of your Holy Spirit, direct us to walk your servant way throughout our lives seeing each person through your loving eyes until the day when we stand in your glorious presence in heaven. O risen Lord, live in us that we may live in you. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. You may be seated.
be to each and every one of you this week as you serve him in his kingdom. At this time, you are dismissed to go. And once again, happy Mother's Day to all of you ladies. <laughs>